Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me on Berets and today in honor of uh, Brave Axphius on the JP side getting 13-2 we have some 13-2 music uh, playing and I gotta say um, it's, uh, it's really nice to see that um, they are kind of breaking away from the trend that was going on with the CG Final Fantasy characters for a while. Still main characters, but it's nice to see Sarah, who is, you know, not a Dissidia character, uh, as far as I know. I guess I haven't been keeping up with the DLC, but um, either way, it's nice to see her get a CG because uh, Sarah's pretty cool. I had some re uh, really fun times playing 13-2 back in uh, a different YouTube era that doesn't exist anymore <laughs> of mine. <laughs> anyway, uh, regardless, we're not here to talk about Brave Exvius in that sense. We're here to talk about Brave Exvius in the War of the Vision sense. And uh, this weekend, there was a lot of things that happened for War of the Visions, and that's great, because War of the Visions has kind of been stuck on the FF14 thing. The raid didn't work so well, so the question is, you know, what is going to be happening in the future? Well, we got some new characters uh, on the uh, brand, two brand new banners and a new weapon enhancement event. While the 14 event is... Um, extended a little bit longer with some extra bonuses for people and a new EX stages uh, to get some re a really nice pile of rewards. Gotta say, even though the raid ended up failing, uh, Gummy offered a lot of compensation and some extra achievements in game that meant approximately, you know, if you total the compensation as well, I think it's over 10 uh, or 100,000 worth of the currency, which is a lot less farming. That I've had to do and I enjoy that but obviously a big problem with uh, any game is that we are all looking forward to those quality of life improvements and gummy this weekend dropped and I know people out there hate my pronunciation of gummy so gummy 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 all right got that out of my system but anyway um so here is the big thing uh they dropped a the devs dropped a big list of stuff that is going to be changing in through the month of December as well as January that are some massive quality of life updates. For the game being out less than one month, obviously the raid has problems and maybe that has pushed this forward, but it's really nice to see a lot of quality of life changes that are going to make the overall experience of the game way better very quickly. So let's take a look, and these are scheduled for the month of December, but are not finalized, so please take it with a grain of salt. Remember that the devs are humans, and there's only so many hours in a day, and uh, doing the rest. Execs, on the other hand. Anyway, so after completing a quest, you can try the quest again with a single tap. So this is something that I've uh, kind of been a little, more than a little annoyed about. When you are going into a mission and uh, you finish it, there are two buttons. There's a red button and a blue button. Blue button takes you out to like a main menu. Red button takes you back to the preparation menu. But there isn't really a lot of, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to have a preparation button unless, you know, something went wrong. So having a button that will allow you to just get right back into the mission just gets through farming much, much, much faster. Uh, the second thing that will be added is a multi-battle auto function. In other words, you can set it up so that multiple, you can uh, sequence out a whole bunch of battles so that you can just leave the computer going and it will make farming much faster for you and a lot more automatic. And that's great. That is just a really nice quality of life. Uh, Dragalia Lost this uh, past week added that uh, feature to its game as well, if if it actually is the same thing, but it does sound like it's the same thing. Either way, it is something that I am definitely very happy to hear about. Next up, addition of quests that can earn unit fragments in, <coughs> including you are in hard quests. This is great. Uh, just the idea that there's going to be more ways of getting character shards, uh, the way to primarily one of the big ways to unlock your character's potential. <clears throat> this alleviates a lot of fear of having to pull a mass number of units, you know, duplicates. There has already been events, uh, like currently there is a 3 million download event where you can get a whole bunch of character shards. They're random, but at least it's a new way 
of getting all you know a fair number of character shards very fast. Also, you can I do believe yeah, you can get 50 lapis off each one, which does add up. Either way, uh, getting more uh, having more ways to get character shards already this early in the game is good news for anybody who wants to develop their characters. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, next up, addition adding higher rarity units and vision card fragments uh, at the Soul Metal Vision Metal Exchange. Now, I'm this is something that I have not had a lot of experience with in the game because, to my knowledge, it, you have to wail pretty hard. Um, but um, there are some shops that, if you end up getting like you max out a character fully in terms of their character shards, all the character shards that you would ever need. Uh, there is a shop where any extras you get just go towards points so you can get some extra stuff. So, you know, even though the duplicate system is still random, you can still get some good stuff out of it, even if you are getting duplicates. But uh, just more options in there is probably good. Not a problem for most people at this point in the game, but uh, it's great that they're already thinking about that. Story recall function, I can only assume this is going to be like a story reset for rewards and everything. Uh, that's great. Story rewards are uh, pretty nice. It would be nice to be able to get them again. I have no idea how this function will work, but the limits are on it. But the fact that it's there, great, fantastic. An auto function uh, when viewing stories. This is great for uh, anybody who just wants to, you know, sit back and relax and enjoy the story which is something that I definitely wanted. I really like it, but I hate having to tap because sometimes I cut off a character's audio. Um, just a really nice feature because I like the story so far. So there you go. Uh, function to see logs when browsing stories. This is just a thing, just checking over what has been said. Improve weapons, missions, and shop UI. Great. Uh, I didn't, I actually don't have problems with the UI. For anybody who's wondering, um, I think that the UI is fine in this game. Not great, fine. <laughs> you know, because I think some people have a problem with that. Uh, the UI is a little busy, but once you've once I had a couple of days with it, uh, I found that it was pretty intuitive and great. So I, I'm looking forward to see how they improve it, but um, wasn't really a complaint. So that's everything for December. Now let's go into January. And January also has a slew of improvements that will be coming. So first of all, the function to select faith ascending and descending in the barracks. I think this is just a um, a organization thing so that you can potentially find your units easier. I don't think that it is um, anything too big. I don't think that there will be a barracks for faith quite yet, but uh, it is interesting. That would be good. The ability to exchange nurturing materials such as Phantom Ball and Awakening Souls with the same material of a higher rarity. So some kind of upgrade system where uh, if you're farming something, if you have too much of it, you might be able to improve it. And again, we'll be curious, um, a little cautious about this because I don't exactly know exactly what this is going to entail or how you will upgrade or if there will be any extra cost to it. But, and obviously the exchange rate will probably be maybe five to one or something like that because you are trading up for a higher quality material. But either way, uh, it sounds kind of nice. Um, yeah, nothing really else. Uh, automatic lap function. So if you're you know running, this allows you to time. No, it's not that. Uh, automatic lap function, I have no clue uh, what this is because they've already said that they're doing multiple stories and everything, so laps uh, it could be for the barracks which might be a little bit of what it was saying and it, you know having basically set up so either the chocobo farm which when you're farming items from your chocobo sometimes it gets full or you know when the barracks runs out of food then it's just over this might be a function that allows you to just lap it so that you can set up for multiple goes or multiple instances and if that's the case that's Right. Uh, implementation of dungeon quests. No idea what this is. Sounds like it'll be a potential new event type. Maybe. It sounds like more of a maybe something a little bit different, which is great. If we're getting new modes already, I've kind of already theorized that a mode that I would love to see in this game is 
a mode that would be like a horde mode trying to survive, which would potentially require you to use different types of characters. Uh, but hey, if this uh, dungeon quest is really interesting, then I'm all for it. Uh, also, improved battle tempo. This is interesting because a lot of people have already come down saying that they do not like the two point or the two times speed, even though you have 1.5 times speed in the game, 2.0 times speed is, um, sorry, two t I got a message and I got distracted. Uh, two times battle speed is hidden behind royal rewards, which will take a long time to unlock uh, if you're not spending any money and a fair amount of money to unlock anyway. So if you, I mean, if they are going to potentially give it a uh, two times speed to people or something like that, or just a way of improving battle speed, it's going to be interesting. It could be just op in, in the, it could just be an options thing where it allows you to skip animations or whatever, which again uh, is not something that I've been complaining about, but maybe some people are. I guess we'll wait and see. If it's optional, it's fine. And push notifications functions for exploration, chocobos, barracks, etc. This is good. This is just good to have in the game. Again, um, probably I'm a little surprised that these weren't already in the game. That the only thing is stamina up. But uh, by the end of January, this will probably be up. So yeah. Other than that, the only thing that is left out of this up big up this inf slew of information of updates got a little tongue tied there is kind of the raid. The raid obviously failed because of apparent, you know, a lot of online problems, namely being that uh, the online connectivity was just not quite there. And the raid itself, uh, the rates to get the raid were pretty low when people were obviously want to farm a ton of it. I mean, you only have so many orbs every so often, but uh, the rates were so low on trying to get the raid that, um, you know, you could almost never get rid of all your raid orbs before you just re you had refilled them because you were constantly connecting in menus and trying to get the dang thing to show up. So it was definitely not the best thing by any means. But um, yeah, I got to say that uh, all of these improvements sound fantastic and are only going to make this game better. I actually really like this game a lot. Uh, the new character design, the uh, Warring Nations, uh, the story, the lots of different things in there. Uh, the fact that, you know, you just can't max out a character quite yet means that people are having to make decisions about what characters they like and how they're building them. And, you know, it's different in arena and everything like that. Uh, somewhat, lots of Sterns, lots of uh, Medinias, but anyway. It is a really cool time to be playing this game. I'm absolutely enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun. And I hope you are too if you are playing it. And if you're not, uh, it is definitely showing that Gummy wants to keep this game going quite strong if they are rolling out this many upgrades so quickly. And not only that, but there's quite a bit to work of, a, like even though they are, you know, making mistakes, they're trying out a new a raid system. They're trying out some new stuff. So you got to give the devs a little bit of a break. Again, executives might control percentages and to try and force whales to spend more money. But I think the devs are like really wanting to make this game great. And that's encouraging, if nothing else. And so if you have kind of shut this game out or haven't tried it yet, uh, do so either when it comes out in global in probably about three to four months that's the estimated timeline or uh if you want to pick up the jp side and uh check out my other videos for tutorials and help anyway that's all for now i'm going to go actually stream this game so i will see you all next time have a good one